Out of more in a second because right now the game is getting started. In the upper right, he is the team Listeran player. In the red, it's special. And down here on the bottom left hand side of the map, we have the blue Protoss player. She goes by the name of Nina. Now, to me, Nina is a very, very fun player, especially because she can throw out all kinds of weirdness where I think she's one of my favorite players for having this strange ability to play better when she is like fallen behind in a game than I feel like when she is just able to get ahead. So I think she makes her a very exciting player to watch. And sometimes I almost get a little bit happy when I see that Nina like falls slightly behind in the early stages of a game, because then I feel like we're in for almost more of a treat of a game. Oh man, I cast so many incredible PVPs on Juggernauta, um, however you said that now, mm -hmm. uh, back in the day, because back when Nina was a little bit more active. Because for whatever reason, she'd get a little bit behind, get a little ahead, whatever. But that game would go base trade as hell. And you'd have some of the best, some of the coolest base trades in PvP that, that I have seen in quite a while. But as we get ourselves set up in this series, I think the one thing I want to point out here, or one thing I want to talk about, is the fact that Nina, right, She her prep is really good. I talked to her actually yesterday because she went for these quick robo openings against Eric, or against Epic. And she was like, yeah, I just think that he was going to answer. He was going to, uh, Epic was going to go for <laughs> counter blink plays. So I opened up Robo and got a Disruptor, right? Just hard countered the hell out of that one. She does, if you give her 24 hours to go prep for something, she's going to do a pretty good job. So I, I'm really excited to see if, as we get into this game number one and really this entire series, where exactly the prep goes. Like what, what does she have planned for this final, final series here in the group stage? Yeah. Well, the slightly like fake proxy Reaper from special or the, the low ground Reaper I was just there to kind of scare Nina a bit. Maybe scared her a tiny, tiny bit, but Nina ended up using the Crotobus on the Stalker, so still gets out of Stalker well in time and kind of in an advanced time. So maybe that's what Special is hoping for, just to kind of annoy uh, Nina and throw off her build a little bit with that. But at the end of the day, it's just going to be the two Reapers poking around, looking for a probe kill. Are they going to be able to find it? Nina trying to go for body blocks. Does not manage to get the, uh, the body block on the Reapers from killing the probe but just still managed to find one of the Reapers and is going to soften up the second one. Yeah, so two Reapers on the map. Not, I mean, they got a probe or two, so that is, that is something, but yeah. losing the map control does be pushed back a little bit. But there's a Cyclone on the map as well here, and it seems like Special's got a Widow Mine. Probably not going to run out with that, but he is very interested in maintaining map control, right? And giving him, giving himself this presence on the map that allows him to lean in and really get some damage done. Because I, I think when we talked about this, we talked about Eric as being this player who might be able to make an upset later on. You say he might not even be an upset. But if we talk about this series, this is one that, you know, talk to Legalak is like 80-20. Right? This is a matchup that's historically special has done very well in. And if you're the player that feels like your favorite, one of the ways you can do it is just lean into your opponent. Try to make them feel uncomfortable, make, force them to make mistakes. So you're just, because you're better, you're going to theoretically make less of them. For now though, Widowmine, you know, Gotta eat a Ooh. shot damage on the other two stalkers as well. Ideally, you'd get that one spot off. And now the Cyclones of the Reapers can dive this pretty heavily, at least until the shield battery is done. Yeah, shield battery is going to be very important to finish up, but it still has to actually heal up these stalkers. So Nina finally retreats back with the stalkers enough to heal them up very slightly. And that should put an end to most of the aggression here for special, just because you know that, that stalker count is going to have built to a fair enough number. Reaper will pop in and get some good scouting information, confirm just kind of everything that's looking pretty normal for the most part. An extra gateway being thrown down. So that's going up to four gateways, not three that Special scouted. Might be a little bit more aggressive than Special uh, originally expected, but we'll see. Here's where it gets interesting, right? Nina, four gateways. That's a lot of pressure on the map. And Special's opened, first of all, you know, a little bit of tech aggression. Nothing too significant, but he did get an extra Reaper. But now he's got Banshees. He's committed to Cloak. Mm -hmm. Actually, did he cancel? No, he didn't get Cloak. So Cloak is done. He's building Banshees here. That's a lot of things that are not stim. That's a lot of things. That's a lot of gas. Yes, he's got a couple tanks. So he's going to have probably two or three by the, probably three by the time that Nina makes the hit happen. But theoretically, opening Banshees like this does open up avenues because like, yes, there are tanks there certainly, but stim is so far off that there's a lot of time that Nina can look to play around the edges of the map and Pick off a tank here, pick off a tank there. There's no bunker in the natural right now. Special should get that started soon. And try to punish the fact that, again, that's a lot of gas. Two Banshees, Cloak. 
that's stuff that is not there available defensively. Yeah, it's kind of funny because Nina has the robo finished, has the four gateways, which usually is going to be a big signal for a Protoss player to kind of get a little bit more aggressive, but didn't really end up investing in a war prism, doesn't have a proxy pylon or anything, and is only now moving across the map at kind of like the most unfortunate timing, which is as the two Banshees show up inside her main base, forces a recall. So really, Nina has been so in the dark. This Banshee moving in, and even though it only gets like two workers, it's not a ton, even man, snipe off one of the Banshees. Nina is playing very in the dark right now. She is, but also she's building herself into the mid game. So four gates, mm -hmm. maybe a little bit early, but she did get the third base reasonably, maybe a little slow, but reasonably timed. And she also got double forge, right? One, one for Zella, for gateway units when she gets it started, because double forge was done. It took a while for those upgrades to get started is actually a pretty big deal if she's able to really there's going to be this plus one stim combat shield timing special's going to have it absolutely if he decides to really take advantage of it but after that you're going to have these one one charge lots and they're going to be i they're going to be really good we saw how powerful even a single upgrade actually i think it was more than that but in the acheron series how powerful individual upgrade leads can be in this matchup when we're looking at small supplies uh, a bunch of charge lots with two two against a one one bio if you're down 30 supply doesn't really matter the bio is still gonna do well but in these small medium supplies having those upgrades specifically on the charge losses they get on top of the marines and the marauders can make a big difference especially if you catch the terran active on the map so i think that's what nina's going to be looking for here but for now a special third base not done just yet but he does have this push he's got three tanks he's got a ton of bio his upgrades done right around right now yeah, this is a scary attack coming toward Nina's side of the map. And Nina, you normally want to use those stalkers to try and buy a little bit of time. But that army is so, so scary. Nina's actually just pulled all the way back with her stalkers. It's not actually bothering to try and do any kind of blink micro, do any kind of pickoffs. Maybe a little bit worried about, uh, like, you know, those sea shanks or the marauders or something. But setting up for a zealot surround and a flank coming in from the top side is going to try and dive in on top of this army and way more than enough to deal with all of the bio over here. Gets in on top of the sea shanks immortal. Now going to be taking care of those units. So many of the stalkers got focus fired down there for special. So he was able to kill off a large number of the really high value units and the zealots eventually get cleaned up. I, I think special is actually kind of okay ish about that trade, I would imagine. Yeah, I. It's funny you say charging down the ramp like this should be more than enough to defend and based on the supplies I'd agree but Nina took the fight a little bit disjointed the zealots from the top side hit first a lot of them went down and then takes the fight from the bottom side she hits 15 seconds before 1-1 one, one, which in fairness special did force the fight but that fight was by far better than special could have ever hoped for realistically yeah. given the build that Nina's gone for and now there's 2-2 two -two on the way there's a robo bay on the way fourth base all of that because special was forced back the trades weren't great. Nina traded a lot for that one. It means that we talked about the high value units. I think the Immortal, well, the Immortal stayed alive, but a lot of stalkers went down. It means that Nina, she got this War Prism, sure, but doesn't really have any agency on the map. Doesn't this ability to go and, and chase Special back from whence he came and get damage of her own outside of this War Prism, maybe getting something done. So Special, does he kill Nina? No, but he establishes a good trade. He maintains the supply lead. He's got a chance for a fourth base. And, I don't think you're right. I don't think he's too unhappy about it. Yeah, I, I don't think that Nina is necessarily like she's not dead or anything bad, like super bad like that. She has good upgrades coming. She's going to have 2 2 that's very, very much so on its way. And if it continues to get Crota boosted out, it may not finish in time for this army arriving on her side of the map, but it may finish like in the middle of the battle or something, or especially if she can buy a little bit of time, it may end up finishing there, as well as even Colossus. So Nina still has a lot of things coming out her way that are going to make it a lot easier for her to defend these kind of four bases that she's got set up as well as that war prism but special i mean this push is still looking rather strong and rather scary if he gets set up in a very very aggressive position nina might have a hard time defending but a lot of the bio actually getting caught a bit early there ends up uh taking a bit of damage with some of those units and stimming up the entire army I mean, important to point out here, I love that Cyclone uh, double died. missile turret setup here. Nina's going to try to go down the ramp. Good force field for now, but Marauders say that's fine. <laughs> sure, force field man, you're stuck in here with me. The Colossus is dead. The Zealots are dead as well. Liberator's getting damage done. And the problem is, Nina tried to go for a counterattack. She had a warp prism on the other side, but the two missile turrets and the Cyclone, looks like there's one Zealot that got out. That's not enough here. Not whatsoever. Special didn't have to worry about it. Loses a missile turret, loses a Cyclone. Who cares? 
he crushes down the Colossus. Mm -hmm. He gets 10 probes with a Liberator Harass. And again, it's just a bad route from Nina's Warp Prism. She didn't know that there were two missile, and missile turrets in the Cyclone there. And if you lose that, you lose that counterattack potential. I mean, the Terran player only has to focus on one spot. Their army is just better. Yeah, that's definitely going to be a rough uh, set of losses there for Nina, but it's kind of an interesting spot now. Nina still does have the double Robo, so she's going to be able to add on another Colossus, start moving into Disruptors, which I think her control is oftentimes quite good at. So we'll see how that actually ends up panning out, especially if there's going to be a continued investment into Vikings. There may actually end up being a lot of, I won't say dead supply, because we've all learned by now that vikings when they land even if they aren't killing colossus they still can pack a wall up against say stalkers and a lot of other units but i, I feel like nina still does have the tools she needs to buy time stay alive she has good upgrades it is a question of how good the engagement she takes is going to be i mean she's got a good decent decent concave setup right now wouldn't mind if like a zealot doesn't really hit all that well but now special says that's fine you're zoned out I'm going to force you to fight right now. Into the natural, we're going to go. Good luck here, Nina. The Disruptor is going to pop out right in time. The shots are fantastic here. But the question is, even if the shots are good, it doesn't matter. Yeah, the first shot was incredible. And the second one is not going to get done down, come down in time or lifted up in time for that matter. And still, Special is running rough shot all over this despite the upgrade lead everything else. Special did so much better in that fight than he had any right to. Given the Disruptor shots, given the awkward positioning, and with the reinforcements, he's going to try to hang around a little bit longer. At the end of the day, though, Nina, I don't think she's going to be too too unhappy about it. She forces the Terran back. The supplies equalize a whole lot more. But what she needs, Fear Dragon, he talks about the tools that she wants. There's no fifth base. Special's got four. She needs to develop her economy more. Yeah, if she was able to take a fifth base during all that, I definitely would feel a lot better about her position right now, just because as you were kind of pointing out special was able to expand during the aggression he's also been so good and consistent about just making sure he's teching up during all these fights so i think during like the earlier push he was teching up into those ghosts during that last push start throwing down the fusion core during the fights or like toward the end of it so that is just that kind of like next step thinking that special keeps having and nina she's gonna start adding on colossus now because the viking count is so reset Maybe not the worst idea in the world. There are more Vikings being added on, but it's it's funny. I, I don't hate, like, I think Special is still in a pretty decent spot here, but I also don't still count Nina out of this. I still feel like she has a lot of tools available at her disposal. Oh, it's definitely a playable game for Nina, right? It's probably, I mean, this drop, it doesn't really, yeah, it's going to force a recall, which is awkward with when Special so far on the right side with a lot of the army. But anyway, like, Nina's... Say special maybe what 10 percent ahead right he's, he's doing he's in a good spot he's certainly in a advantageous position and if you tried to call the game right now you'd say yeah if you had to make a decision which has happened in the past but luckily not recently you'd say okay special probably wins the game but this is still very playable for nina she's got her fifth base on the way plus three armors done plus three attack getting added in move on up to three colossus she's got a uh, two disruptors not an incredible number but she's doing a good job of shadowing the terran or the terran army as special tries to stim on top of this emp's on a lot of the zealots but the rest of the army's here so that should be fine special though he's matching her income for income he's trading better here and the concave the reinforcements are great there's nothing to deal with the vikings the stalkers are here but they're not shooting Ooh. disruptor shot gets gunned down in time and now with the colossus gone as well there's no splash damage bio three two bio versus well, I guess two, three bio, but more importantly, with the ghosts on top of it, if you don't have overwhelming numbers or an incredible surround, you're not winning the fight. It's a special. Knocks down the splash damage, catches Nina in transition, and now it's a five base Terran versus a four base Protoss. Yeah, now it becomes very, very awkward, and I'm starting to feel a lot better about special's position in this game. Nina is going to start hurting economically, and it's just the difference in the quality of these units is really going to start showing. Nina is keeping up or was keeping up in supply for a little bit. It may even start to look like she's keeping up in supply after the next warp in, but it is just going to be a bit misleading because the number of high power quality units that Nina has is definitely on the lower side. Unless she's able to make incredible use of those four Colossus, it is going to be rather tough for her. And she has to defend that fifth base. Like if she loses the fifth base again, she just simply is not going to have the economy to keep up with special space. All right, so eight Vikings versus four Colossus. Traditionally, you'd say, ah, that's not enough. These are plus two Vikings. <laughs> They do shred. You have to be very careful with Nina to make sure that you are properly positioned. I do like that she's getting the gold versus the, the linear side where she tried to take. It's just a little bit closer to the rest of your bases. So 
maybe a little bit easier to defend even if it is a little bit further on the map <laughs> stalkers blink four they get damage on a liberator don't kill it here's the thing though extended liberate liberator range is done colossus against non-range liberators are really solid you outrange the liberators you can take a fight under the aegis of things and you can start to kill the bio with extended range liberators as they are even even though they've been nerfed once it just becomes an extremely technical fight. So Nina, she's maxed out once again, but Liberator's doing damage. She's actually going to do a really nice job knocking down some of the Vikings, I would think, but she's not targeting the Vikings down. Even still, wow. I guess Guardian Shield does enough for now. The four Colossus, they stand strong, even though she's taking damage on the bottom side. Even though Liberators have killed about five workers, not much more than that. They're going to have to reseed. Stalkers are there, and now Nina, you know, supplies are pretty equal. The better question... We're looking at no counter to these Colossus. There are four Colossus on the map. If Nina wanted to run forward and try to put pressure on the third, I wouldn't hate it. Yeah, I was just thinking about that. Like, is this a position where Nina could just start getting more aggressive? She has the Observer there, which is scanned, but there's nothing actually attacking. Okay, there we go. There's the one single Liberator <laughs> attacking the Observer, but misses the opportunity. Looks like finally that other Liberator gets cleaned up, but Nina decided to back off, and that's... That's the most interesting thing to me. She had vision of the army she just fought, so she knew what was there. She also had an observer over that kind of location, but she still opted and said, I don't want to continue pushing into that. And that makes me wonder if Nina has like some other game plan that where she'll feel more comfortable if she is taking, honestly, a pretty decent set of trades over there with the Colossus, dishing out the damage, and also cleaning up this drop over here. Uh, maybe Nina is just waiting to get to a comfortable disruptor count, then she'll feel really good about her position. I don't, I, one thing that Nina has, in recent years, kind of suffered from a little bit. We saw this, I think, we, we saw this no position better than when she played Uko uh, two seasons in a row and gave us some, like, mm -hmm. two-hour series each time. Nina is the more passive player. Uh, there was a time when she was incredibly aggressive, and her Blink Stalker micro just really solid and getting super aggressive on it. But in recent years, Nina has kind of had this tendency to, even when she's ahead, when she's behind, whatever it is, to sit back and let the game come to her and try to win like that. That's kind of what it feels like right now because, you know, you talk about getting to a good disruptor count for your dragon. I'm with you. I understand. When you let a Terran get to this late, when they get to plus three even on their liberators, when they get to range liberators in enough numbers, when they start to build a bank and build all these bases and three, three and all of this stuff, ghost counts, it becomes extremely hard for the Protoss player to go take a fight unless they're, you know, maybe they had some Tempest or something and they're going to the Sky Toss and that can be a little bit different. But generally, it feels really hard to take a fight against a Terran player. So Nina opting into that. We're going to have to see if it works out for her for now. Playing around the Zelnaga really nicely. Knocks down a bunch of Vikings, some Liberators. Punish is special for being there. So even as I say it's hard, at the moment, Nina's doing a pretty good job of it even still. Yeah, I mean, her late game armor control has been very on point for a majority of this game. And special is going to be fighting a little bit extra damage there. Okay, I was a little worried that Instructor or something would get picked off by some of the Siege Shanks, the Liberators. But Nina's going to squeeze on through and finally putting on a little bit of pressure here on one of these bases. Disruptor shot, not going to be a range of the bio. The Liberators are going to zone things out. But Nina can retreat back to that top left hand base and take that out relatively safely I, I don't know that there's a whole lot special can do to defend this unless he just tries to counterattack. but this is a protoss you can recall yeah here's what's surprising to me as well as by the way special knows about that observer on top of his third base he still has not killed it despite spending one <laughs> scan there but we don't have building armor oh this is a good opportunity for, she's gonna recall oh no that was actually a horrible opportunity for nina she's got to get out of here i didn't see the army from the right side half the army gets recalled this is incredible for special Catching half the army here. Nina has to run away, play around the corner, snipe what she can. But man, what a flank coming in from Special, making it so hard for Nina to take the fight. You know, I looked at that, I'm like, ah, the Liberators are in the air. There's nothing there. You can snipe Liberators this good. But that is not true anymore. Special knocks the rocks down, but now Nina holds an awesome position. She's able to get her way out of it, knocks Liberators down, sits in the middle. More Liberators are going to fall down. Got to be careful the surround on the backside, but Nina... And right now she's just taking she's fighting half the army shots are going to be okay colossus are falling down here but most of the army on the backside falling down as well nina steamrolling this fight even if this army dies which it won't she has the reinforcing position she killed two bases a special and from a good fight to what looks like a horrible fight turned into an incredible fight and nina she's up 50 supply uh, it was such a strange series of events, but I think what happened there was Special saw, obviously he saw Nina, caught her in a position where she wasn't quite ready. Nina recalled a large portion of her army, 
And what was kind of interesting is it looked really bad for her because she had so many units that were left behind that were also getting flanked. But what was funny is that a lot of the units that were getting attacked there were like the Archons and they were beefy units that even as the rat, like the uh, retreat was happening from Nina, Special was also like kind of stimmed up pretty heavily. So as we see a handful of Liberators going down, this is a nice snag for Nina as well. But Nina was retreating and really just like the single Archon was taking a bunch of little like pot shots. But nothing was actually dying for Nina. She managed to get back to her reinforcements in time. And then she started saying, oh, well, actually, you don't have that much. You're in this like limbo line turning the corner. She starts taking a good fight over there. And now Special started finding like worse and worse trades. It turned into such a strange situation where it felt like Special had Nina's just like, you know, gun against the head. And then suddenly Nina just like turned it around because special kind of chased a little bit too far and she just said no you and it's wild this is a game where nina has been trading about a thousand resources worse as another orbital is going to go down for the majority of this game and all of a sudden the terran player is down seven thousand or six thousand resources that is not how these late games tend to go generally it's like the protoss is doing okay but they went on economy and there's that nina just killed two more bases the special has one base he can mine from the main base is totally mined out natural's gone that overcharge is a little bit late in this drop team kill a base out of nina's but on the balance of things here fear dragon look at it it's 500 min minerals a minute versus that was in this army that special has is the last army that he's gonna have in this game and nina running right on top i mean emps are solid but there's army in the medevac special cannot afford to take this fight he's not gonna be able to make it happen nina catches him on the map and nina takes game one I mean, I feel like in a weird way, that was kind of like the most Nina-esque kind of game I've seen in a while. It's, I won't say it's like the full version of what I sometimes see from Nina, but it really is Nina not falling crazy, crazy far behind, but just seeming like some things are not going very well. Loses, especially like when she was losing the fifth base and stuff. She's not taking the best of trades. Special seems like he's getting a little bit further ahead, taking some slightly better trades as well. And then just something happens it's it's not like oh a serial moment where serial just has a base that's mining for longer has a larger economy and then you kind of gradually see not at any one singular moment but serial just gets further ahead through the course of the game it's like with nina it's there is a single distinguishable moment that you're like that was the moment where she did this and in this micro or this tactical fight she just got really far back ahead and i feel like it was that that it was that fight she was retreating from special where she was first attacked in and like you were saying killing off those bases in the top left but then the, even the retreat that's where it really just turned around from nina finding a good trade to nina turning the game into a massive w yeah i mean it's funny i think fear dragon you gave us the storyline of this game before it even started you, you start like the first minute you're like yeah i, I I kind of want to see Nina go down a little bit because when she yeah. has the comebacks, they're super cool. And she plays all, it, it's great. And that's exactly what happened. Nina was down a little bit. I think we said 10%, maybe a 10% advantage for special at like 10 minutes in just how the game had gone. And all it takes, I, I'm just going to, another way to say this, dude, I love Alcyone. It gives us some of the best games. That was a lot of fun. Yeah, no, it definitely was. We're heading on to post youth, which is another very fun map. Um, are, are we post youth? I mean, I'm definitely post youth. I'm, <laughs> I'm anything but youth. I'm like the anti youth at this point. Yeah, you know, feeling the bones, the fact you're, you're still, you're still like the end part. You're not post youth, but you're like at the end part of youth. I would say I'm technically an elder Gen Zer, right? Like you look at the, the, the charts. It's either for, like yeah. the, the youngest millennial or the oldest Gen Z. Um, but seeing as I grew up in the middle of nowhere, I'm clearly a boomer. That being said, one thing that is not a boomer is getting into game two, and that was a horrible transition. Ignore it. Game two. <laughs> <laughs> in the upper right here in the red, looking solid up until he just took one bad fight and got flanked around and flanked himself. It's special. And down here in the bottom left-hand side of the map, sitting up 1-0, she is the Protoss player in the blue, Nina. Oh, very, very fun player to watch, I think. Uh, definitely one of my favorite and like NA staples, I would say, especially as a streamer. She just has a very, very fun stream where 
As I was kind of saying before in the like the beginning of the last game, she just has a playstyle where I think that she, when she is behind in a game, I think she takes risks or takes. I won't even. I don't even make uh, me to say like risks in the form of gambles. I know that like there are some players who you say they take a risk and it's a gamble of. I hope that my opponent isn't doing X because if they do X, I'm screwed. If they aren't doing X, then I'm ahead. So the kind of gambles that Nina takes is she kind of gambles on control. I feel like a lot of the time or the gamble of how a tactical fight will go or her disruptor control or things along those lines. And it's kind of she's gambling on the ability that she will be able to out micro or outplay or out multitask or something her opponent in a moment. And I oh my god if she actually is able to get an scv in this day and age of tvp like that's actually incredible i think special got a repair in at the last second to get it down to like to recover it so okay this reaper should have killed the probe a little bit faster at the end of the day yeah. probe does not kill the scv will die but you know i i live in this world of what if Ruby? <laughs> what if the scv died what if the probe traded his life what it didn't it wouldn't actually impact the game all that much but what if yeah i mean We'd be, he we'd be hearing about how ridiculous probes are from Juanito. <laughs> and he'd be, uh, he'd have some choice words about it, I'm sure, on his stream or something. Or maybe like in Scarlet stream or Sal stream or something like, but probes, am I right? Like how ridiculous are they? But nah, dude, no, SCVs uh, are broken. Yeah. 55 HP versus 50. Three shot by oracles and adepts <laughs> instead of two. Oh man, SCVs are broken. I mean, if you've ever been SCV pulled as a Protoss player, sometimes you do think about that. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think it's true, but you know, I every, I think every Protoss player has that moment where they're just like, man, SCVs really are tanky. <laughs> I don't look at this so special. Kind of doing the same thing he did in game number one, right? Single Reaper, not two, but just rallying the Widow Mine onto the other side of the map, just trying to catch a unit here there in an awkward position and you know as we look at how this game is going by the way this is a bit of a more aggressive option from special barracks double gas factory but I, I was kind of expecting to see nina go more for a robo play not that it's common but this was one of those games where it felt mm -hmm. like special just given who special is down a map he's an aggressive terran there are good sieged up positions where we might try to see some sort of anti-blink play i guess post youth is really long though so that there's that Regardless, Blink is on the way. There's a drop on the way. We're going to have to see how this one really ends up. Yeah, I, I know Nina can definitely try. She can absolutely kind of mix up her strategies and stuff. She's not a player that I think is uh, as she used to be, oh. where she would have her strategy and she would only do that one strategy. But Nina, I think, is absolutely the kind of player that is not afraid to continue doing what her strong suit is, regardless of whether or not it's predictable. I so. really really like how Nina handled that as well. Okay, there's gonna be one. Oh, it actually can get five probes. Never mind. I was gonna say, hey, I really like how she handled that. It didn't get any damage from the Widow Mine on the left side, but she tried to be a little greedy, right? Like, I'm not gonna pull my probes all the way away. I'm just gonna pull them a little bit away so I can make them back to mine as quickly as possible. And that didn't draw the Marines further forward where she could fight them and the Widow Mine got a shot off. And at the end of the day, instead of losing maybe one to two probes, she loses five. Does that make the big difference? I mean, it's damage. It's a lot more than she would have liked. But now the question is, Blink yeah. is done. What can Nina get done here? Yeah, this is a really weird map when it comes to the Blink Stalker stuff because ooh. there is such a large area on the left-hand side as well as, ooh, nice snipe up on the medevac. And Nina's going to commit up. Seeing that that siege tank is over on that left-hand side says, oh, well, you know, are actually covering the right-hand side. Liberator's going to be getting damage done in the meanwhile. Nina ends up having to back off and she really ultimately at the end of the day ends up losing a handful of stalkers and not really trading out for anything more than I guess the medevac that she was catching on the retreat but then moving up the ramp she only really got a couple of marines that's it yeah I like I liked the idea I, I really did like the idea but special out of liberator across the map the entire time Nina's distracted can't really focus on it taking more damage and special's doing such a good job right now of making life uncomfortable Nina has the right openings she could have gotten oh, a lot of damage done lock. with those stalkers but because of everything else that special's throwing in nina's face it's the game's feeling pretty hard and especially behind this pedal to the metal right he's moving out with bio he's moving out with tanks stim is a long ways off it just got started plus one just got started there's no combat shields even on the production tab 
this is a powerful army and if nina is forced to get shoved up into a corner if she, if the tanks all get their siege it's gonna be pretty rough now the one saving grace here ravi as things get started charge is pretty quick it's gonna be done pretty quickly you can get on top of the tanks then but right now nina just comes in this. what is happening there's no way this works yeah nina was trying to go over those siege tanks and she's gonna get two of them in exchange for every single stalker and that I think it just may very well end up being game because I don't know how you recover from that. Here is the big problem is that charge is finishing up quickly, sure, but it was not quick enough. She was going to like have a very difficult time defending that third base, I think. If she did not do that kind of maneuver, I think the Siege Shank Siege up in an even better position on top of that third. And I think it's even less, it's like, it's as uh, unlikely that Nina actually defends the third, but I am uh, with you 100% that I like the chances better of her giving up the third and actually keeping her stalkers alive and doing something else otherwise but she did not get a great trade with that no she didn't at least this time she's going to be able to delay the third base but there's just too much bio so this is not going to get canceled nina not going to be able to make that happen and at this point special is stimulus three tank push runs across the map kills how many stalkers kills 10 stalkers knocks the base down he's killed 13 probes and you talked about game one about how nina you know sometimes falls behind brings it back into the late game school comebacks you know, Fear Dragon, I don't want to say it, but 16 pro or 16 probes and 10 stalkers in a third base, that's not just falling a little bit behind. That is game ending damage in a significant way. No, absolutely. I, I honestly do think there are some pro players who would have actually just left the game at that point. But I think that uh, Nina is not that kind of pro player. She really does try, even in games where she falls significantly further behind. And I don't blame her because it's kind of the same thing as we saw from Bly earlier on in the group stages in the European region. Sometimes, it's not all the time, but sometimes, maybe even if it's one in every like 20 games that you fall really far behind and you stick in it and try to make something happen, Bly will make that comeback real. And it looks ridiculous when he does it, but you find these opportunities, you out micro your opponent in certain like areas. I think doing big playmaking units like Storms is actually a great way to do it. And Nina is capable of it sometimes. She's absolutely been able to do it a couple of times. It is absolutely going to be the less likely scenario. But what's the harm in trying? No, absolutely not. I mean, this is this is a tournament match. You're on tournament life here, right? Nina's up one, but even still, you lose this series, you're out of the tournament. Absolutely I go try. Storm is them. done. Storm from the back side. It almost kills everything, but instead the War Prism is going to go down. Special gets back out. Nina buys some time, but one storm plays just a little bit better. A third storm on top of that army, and suddenly Nina, I'm not going to say she's ahead in the game, but she is right back into it. Yeah, I mean, honestly, if she... I know that there are ghosts out, but if she's able to evade any of the EMPs, she gets another couple of storms like that. I'm not going to say that it's dead even or anything like close to that, because obviously she's still a two basing or like a now very freshly three basing Protoss. But it's she could stay alive against this push. She, if she gets some decent storms again like that, she could very well stay alive. She keeps the high temple alive. She stops up so many of these units. If the zealots on the top go over to the right hand side, I think she can actually take that fight. Yeah, I mean, one widow mine's gonna get a solid shot here. Ooh. The Vikings, four Vikings, really, they are a dead supply. This bio is so low. Yeah, the Archon's dead, but look at this. Nina is making miracles happen. Obviously, the game is still not a good position for her. She's only on 57 workers, only on three bases. But those three storms, and even that's with one high Templar getting EMP'd. So, you know, imagine a fourth storm in that fight and this, this sequence of things. Nina has clawed her way right back into it. Again, it's not easy. She still has to get a fourth face up, double Robo, Colossus, getting those upgrades. But between 1-1 one, one finishing and those storms, I mean, I'm not saying I'm a believer yet, but I may not be the only one. I mean, I'm just going to put it this way. Nina went from a position where she was significantly far behind to now she was just far behind. Like she is continuing to take these trades that are going unbelievably well for her. I don't believe she has enough energy for a guardian shield for this fight, which is going to kind of hurt a little bit because that plus plus one or uh, like a plus one upgrade, uh, weapon upgrade would be really helpful. But not going to be the case for this fight she's going to be able to buy a little bit of time and you know she even has the shield battery she could technically fall back to if she's okay with just sacrificing a couple of these zealots and one of mines are, are getting good shots but yeah 
Yeah. It'd be like it'd be nice to be effectively plus one, plus three, plus one attack. Guardian Shield gives you an additional two armor, but even still, Special's fighting down upgrades. Yes, he's cutting away, and that does make it a little bit more awkward, but he's not able to move through. And if we look at resources lost here, it'd be I would have expected to say, yeah, Nina's behind in supply or behind in resources lost. It was such a bad early game. But because of those storms, because of those fights she's taken. He's actually heading resources lost. She's got her fourth base up now. Special's only on three. Two, two is about halfway done. Colossus are on the map right now. I think most of the Vikings are dead. There are four of them, a couple more on the way. This game, 150 supply to 139. Nina's up a base. Uh, upgrades are good. If you said, okay, this is a game 12 minutes in. Don't look at anything else. Don't pay attention to how the game is gone. I, this is a pretty reasonable PVT. No, absolutely. And now... When you start adding in the disruptors and the disruptor hits that Nina was able to get in the last game, I'm actually genuinely a little bit worried for special. I don't think he's in a theoretically bad spot or anything just yet, but just based on the context of the last game and some of the trades he was taking, I actually think Nina is posing a very, very scary threat here with these disruptors. Now one thing we got to point out as well as we, we look at this fight is special. He moved out with three ghosts and then stopped building ghosts. So, for now, finally, we have a ghost count that is solid, that is respectable. Stocks pulling forward. Archon's get big shots there on top of the Vikings as well. But he, he didn't have a lot of ghosts with the army in a lot of these fights. Just tried to run and just shove the army down the throat and just give you no opportunity. Just, I am so far ahead, I can win the game. And what that meant was that a lot of those fights, we had like one EMPs, two EMPs, just not really all that great. Archon's get on top of these Vikings. There are two that remain. Disruptors not getting a ton, but... The Colossus stands strong. There are two of them right now. Shot is incredible <laughs> as well. And special, he just dives right on top. Are, are we back? Are we back? <laughs> are, are we at a point now where we can say that Nina is maybe even ahead? I mean, she has 2-2 two, two upgrades. And I think even though she's lost a lot of the disruptors here, she still has three out on the map. And she's going to be able to clean up the tank. She's going to be able to clean up this push. Killing off a ghost potentially over here or killing off a couple of these medevacs as well. Which, by the way, it's... Colossus being added in. So any medevac that goes down means it's taken away time from the starport. And I know there's a second starport being added on, but there's actually nothing being made from the first one. The medevac count isn't exactly super high. If more of these medevacs go down, we're going from four to two potentially. Uh, I'm genuinely I, I, getting very worried here for special. Okay, that medevac survived on like one HP. It's gonna get taken down at the end. Sorry, I'll get the medevac down, please, Nina. Uh, she's gonna get it at the end, but uh, it's a little bit more value than it would have. Is Disruptor shot knocks down the rest of this. And now Nina's up a base. Nina's up in supply. 3-3 three, three is halfway done. Special. Is he only on single eBay? No, he's on two eBay. He just forgot his armor. You know, I, Ravi, I would like to take back my words. I said, what was it? Five, six minutes ago that we like it when Nina gets a little bit behind because the game gets interesting if she makes a comeback happen. But this is too much damage. Special has gotten too much done. There's, it's game ending damage. I was wrong. Yeah, I think it I'm is a big, actually a very <laughs> big enough fan to say I was wrong there. <laughs> it happens, man. Like Nina is just so, so good at playing in these kind of like chaotic games and finding ways to crawl back into a game. I will say if there was like a weakness oftentimes that we see in Nina's play and I'm always kind of ready and waiting for her to prove me wrong. It is sometimes closing out games, but this is going to be a very interesting fight with a big disruptor connection, but a lot of her army getting very much so concaved on. She loses so many high value units. A couple of Colossus also rallying in from the backside. Vikings going to be able to take care of those 16, 20 workers going down and almost as if to jinx it. As I said that, yeah, Nina falls drastically far behind in this game. I am so sorry, Nina. I cast the crew. I'm like, ah, she's back. I was wrong. <laughs> and then immediately it all falls to, falls to pieces there. That drop, double drop from special kills the third base, gets 23 probes. She loses everything on the right side. I, she's still got money, which is the crazy thing. She's still on four bases. Now she's on three. Never mind. Still got something. But at this point, I mean, there's no way, right? It, even with 2 1, even down upgrades, the fights in the open field with the Vikings and the EMPs and the drop as well. A game that was looking very good for Nina, extremely reasonable for Nina, falls apart in about 30 seconds. And we, the lucky few, get to go to game three. Yes, we do. After a very, very chaotic game number two. Um, yeah, it's, it's funny because I do think Nina, again, she's very good at 
getting herself edges in games. And this is the way I've always rationalized it. I, I'd have to maybe rethink it in the context of that last game. Because I think the thing that lost her in that last game was obviously she was losing a lot of workers and stuff during that last set of trades. But I think just taking that fight out in the open like that, it's so, so tough. Her army composition really, really is about making sure you're taking like the right angle of engagement. If you aren't taking the right, correct angle of engagement, if you're getting concaved on and your disruptors are trying to land big hits on bio, but the bio is so spread out, the Colossus are also not finding amazing damage or anything. And that army just does not look nearly as strong as it normally should. And that's kind of just what happened. Special found an incredible fight there at the end. That was like one of the best kind of angles of the fight special could ask for mm -hmm. if nina takes a fight at a different position if she pulls back i don't know four seals or disruptor sacrifices one or two disruptors just to like zone out the army or something then i think she can pull, uh, pull back to like more of a choke point take a slightly better trade clean up the drop on the other side that was dealing a lot of damage there's maybe opportunities but that is just one of the difficult things nina i think sometimes she can get ahead in games but i think sometimes closing out from being ahead is one of her weaknesses yeah and you know unfortunately as well uh one thing she did a really good job of that allowed her to do it most of what she did in game number one she had really good vision on the map she knew where specialist army was for the most part yeah there was nothing on post dude like north of that third base so the drop goes in undetected nina tries to take a fight and even then down upgrade she's distracted trying to deal with this drop warp in it it gets really awkward the, the terran army is always going to be a little bit more microbole it dives on top we saw what happened but Amphion is game number three. We get to see another game. We are blessed with a third game and what has been a really, really cool series thus far. So friends, we're going to get into that third and final game. One player gets to move on from the series into the playoffs. And the upper left in the red is ahead and then's behind and then wins the game anyways. His name is Special. And down here in the bottom left-hand side of the map, comeback queen, she is Nina. Man, weird, weird series, but this is the kind of fun that I always uh, enjoy from not only North America, but specifically from Nina games where they really do keep you on the edge of your seat. You truly, truly are a fool if you try to too confidently predict who is like, on the verge of winning. I think it's fair to say if a player is ahead at any given moment or something, but man, when it comes to like games of Nina or it comes to games of like Bly or something, I really honestly believe if you try to confidently predict who's about to win, unless it's like a hundred supply differential, I think you're a fool. I think I think you, you've gotten too overconfident about your knowledge of StarCraft, because we move outside the knowledge of normal StarCraft in these kind of games. Uh, to quote Estrella once upon a time in A, we are powerful clowns. Although, <laughs> you know, it's funny. You talk, um, you talk about that, about being able to predict things. I had something to say. Moving on, it's going to be a century coming out of Nina, which is, again, is pretty cool. We're seeing more of these century openers. Really, it's just for vision, right? To be able to go and see exactly what the Terran player is going for. And I was going to ask you, Rubby. Now, unfortunately, mm -hmm. the time has passed and it's going to be a warp gate first. But do we see Stargate on this map? Against the Terran, it's kind of an island map on the left side. Tons of dead airspace. Blink is not particularly good here, but mm -hmm. it was like, you know, getting ready for that Twilight opener instead. Yeah, I, I think even though I have said before and I was agreeing with you, I think during Europe or something, or maybe it was during the Asia region, that I do like phoenix and stargate openings on this map just because of all that dead airspace because i think there are like good opportunities for it to follow up into colossus nina stylistically as a player is such a strong blink player i just expect it i think it is more regardless of what the meta is when nina has the opportunity to go for blink if it is like at least a viable thing to do in the meta i'm more surprised when she doesn't and Four probes, by the way, five probes now, continuing to potentially build up over here if this Hellion gets another shot, does not. But that is a very, very juicy set of trades there for special. I think it's important to point out as well, when the damage happens, because right now it's three minutes and 30 seconds into the game, five probes are dead. If that ran in a couple minutes later, yeah, five probes, eh, less so. So when you compare the two, the damage that Nina took in game one, I think that happened like four or five minutes. 
And in this game, one might argue that despite Nina losing more probes, I think it was like 10, 12, or get a stock. Gonna get it. Hey, there we go. Gonna get a probe. And hey, there's a drop on the way here as well. Special more and more game over game is just trying to lean into Nina to make her make mistakes early on to punish her forward. Winamine drop here. Actually, she's gonna kill one of these Winamines very quickly. Probes have to get pulled away. Nice. Ah, oh, gets a stalker. Not exactly what you're looking for with Nina, but force fields means the Winamine can't run away. The Hellions should die. And nice response there from Nina. Again. The sentry died, I think, right? Oh, did it? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, this is a very weird and awkward start there for Nina, for sure. Um, she is going to have been powering out those uh, Chrono Boosted probes. So her probe count actually, despite everything, is not looking unbelievably terrible. It's like 32 to 41 is pretty reasonable. The third base finally starts up around like the five minute mark. She's finally able to move out across the map. And Bimmel, she's she's definitely got to get something done or like look for something she can get done with this blink. Um, whether it be, you know, picking away at the bunker or finding some scouting information, if she can like pick away at the Raven, force mining time off or something, like I think it would be great. But uh, yeah, I think she really wants to at least find some information about what her opponent's up to. And I think actually funny enough, there is like the, the hop up cliff, the Reaper hop up cliff. That would be a great area for these stalkers to poke in from. Yeah, we saw it happen yesterday. I can't remember yeah. if it was Nina game or not, but if out really nicely the bunker is gonna go down supply depot gets slowed down today a bit. actually oh right? yeah, also today um yeah yeah uh now here's the good here's the great news if you're a nina fan special committed to a raven committed to interference matrix this is an anti-colossus build there's not even a robo on the map this is plus one armor charge this is an army designed to deal with these early bits of care and aggression now nina doesn't want to lose more probes maybe losing one or two here or there to the raven is acceptable oh, she loses three again trying to get a little bit too greedy on pulling off pulling forward losing a couple probes here there is, is somewhat manageable especially if you can kill the raven but it's rough five more probes go down there's really nothing good to say about that but again at the very least this army in this building is designed to deal with this push that the terran player is getting ready for yep if she can find the right angle of engagement uh then it can work out very very well for her and She's going to have a couple of these stalkers. She's going to be able to see the potential move out here as the bio force is trying to bait Nina into the siege tank fire. She does get baited. Two stalkers going down. That is definitely going to hurt. There aren't actually that many stalkers out on the map right now, especially because of all the early game damage she took. So that is going to really, really be frustrating for her dealing with any kind of push out. But uh, medevac drop hanging out along the right hand side of the map gonna look to try and uh catch nina out of position and again there's just not that much anti either a couple more stalkers got warped in and nina is actually moving out a little bit more aggressively looking to maybe meet the army but it's not actually moving out right now yeah i know what i think is actually really cool is we see again where raven's gonna dive in zealots are gonna get on top of that so it really shouldn't get much damage done but what i think is pretty cool is again we're seeing that pretty quick templar archive storms on the way getting these high templar and we saw how powerful that was in that last game. Nina is, again, she's not in a great spot. She's lost 11 probes and lost a sentry. Some stalkers going down. And specifically, those stalkers and those sentries, those gas-heavy tech units early on, they do matter quite a bit. You don't want to build any more than you really can get away with. Because you want, again, that's expensive. That slows you down elsewhere. But for now, okay, Medivac takes half damage. Looks like it's not going to properly go down, though. Nina needs to buy about 30 seconds, 20 seconds. That's when Storm's going to be done. Special's trying to hit right before then. Plus one, stim, combat shields. But again, that's a lot of zealots, mm -hmm. right? Plus one is done on the... Plus one armor is done. The zealots can take a fight if they get a good angle. And Storm is getting closer and closer to being complete. That's the timing Nina needs. Yeah, I, I think the thing, though, is that this isn't that committed of a push from Special. Like, he didn't pull any of the seed shanks. I don't think that he's looking to try and end the game here. I think he's looking for damage, if he can find it. So the medevac drop was trying to head in at the same time that this bio force is pushing into the front. If Nina had pulled too many of her units away to deal with that medevac drop, then the like bio force at the front finds some damage. Or now this medevac drop heads back into the third base, tries to find like a probe or something over there. But now there's double medevac heading into the main base. This is all looking for damage. I don't think Special's expecting this to like win a big army fight right now. So no. I think. She has time for Storm, and Storm is going to be definitely building up energy, but she definitely needs to make sure she doesn't take too much damage here. I mean, she's not taking any damage at all. She gets the medevac, like, loses a stalker or two. Awkward. She needs to go <laughs> deal with the rest of these Marines. That's important. But that was 30 supply, three medevacs were mm -hmm. the special loss for really not that much gain. And now Nina, supply lead, plus one's going to be done soon. She's got Storm. 
now a special knows that there are high templars on the map ghost academy has only just now been started this buys nina a ton of time fourth phase up. i mean what am i just gonna get a decent shot but now nina can get her fourth phase up she's her economy is reasonable Special's gonna continue to try to multi-prong. Why wouldn't if Nina can lock down her position and looks like she's got some vision kind of on that on that dead air side where you gotta be careful about Terran pushes. I wouldn't mind seeing Nina go and try to attack into the third base. The natural, that's really hard. There are a lot of tanks there. But the third base is far less defended. Mm, yeah, that is gonna be an interesting one. If Nina decides to do something with that. We're gonna see special is gonna continue to just be out on the map and kind of not committed with the aggression but just looking for opportunities to try and find something knocking down the rocks continue to poke around with kind of uh drops and stuff and frankly the stalker count still isn't actually that high right now for nina so just, nina's just at eight stalkers which is enough to deal with a handful of medevacs that they poke their way forward but storms coming down on top of this army is going to be a little bit annoying ambushing some of specials army forcing these medevacs to work a bit of overtime even forcing them back a bit but it does seem like it's been light pressures from special it doesn't seem like anything really committed is happening on either side right now yeah it's actually you talk about that storm just softening the army up disc played dolan yesterday and it was a game that Disc <laughs> eventually lost but he he was in, actually he was much further behind than even nina got in this game but he just had random high templar on the map and just kept uh -oh. keeping the army so soft is now thinking about stimming of the ramp here there were no high templar in this army emp not complaining gotta choke. be so careful about the force fields up the choke Benina getting herself set up here storms are, or excuse me scans are going to see some of that now the mps go down a little bit nina this army is very disjointed here where's the storm it's got to go down it's not going to land but hey a bunch of zealots doing a pretty nice job anyways now they're trying to unload here vikings on top of the colossus are going to knock that down and the storm's okay and this is a weird fight because it felt like Nina was in a good position to really wipe it. Instead, she doesn't, but she still kind of wins the fight anyways. And Special barely doesn't get that Colossus. Yeah, it, I think what was really strange about it is that Special had this choke point. Nina yeah. tried to like cut off the Bioforce from going through back through the choke point and just retreating back to the safety of the siege tanks. Special ends up microing further into like a corner of the ramp, but the siege tanks are just wailing away at Nina's army. So Nina starts taking like worse trades there, but then Special realizes that he actually can't defend the siege tanks because reinforcements come in there for Nina and actually clean up. So now Nina has this golden opportunity here where she can try to push in. The Colossus are not really gonna have too much contention. There's so many zealots and look at the full surround there from all of these charge blocks. Is it actually enough though? EMPs come out on this army. The Colossus is dealing massive amounts of damage, but Nina just simply does not have enough to actually push forward. 10 seconds before extended thermal lance. I, it, it's crazy that she took that fight right there. And I was about to get so excited, Ruby, because I'm like, look, it's your micro trick. You, you get the charge and it goes so far and it's so cool and it's a full surround. I think just a moving would have been better. <laughs> Straight up. Because the Zealots, they got yeah. that full surround, but they weren't fighting. They didn't do any damage. Storm kind of lands, but only hits half the army. And all of a sudden, Nina is in a really rough spot. This one Colossus is going to try to hold the fourth down. She's got two more on the way that are going to be done soon. But she can't really delay the fourth base all that much. And all of a sudden, special, he's got a 40 army supply lead. Upgrades are roughly equal. 2-1 versus 1-2. Kind of six one way, half dozen the other. At least Nina has her splash damage back, right? She's on three Colossus, adding in the disruptors. It was a horrendous fight. Let's make no bones about it. But it is still a little hard here for special to run up this ramp. Yeah, knocking down the rocks is going to make things a little bit easier for special to try and do something. And remember, even if the art of supplies overall look kind of even-ish, that Nina has a lot of wor extra workers that is not really adding into the army supply. This Ooh. fight for special though is not the fight he was looking for. Oh boy. That was, okay. those were some great force fields. EMP just didn't, they hit some of the army. They didn't get the sentries. So despite the fact that there were like three or four ghosts in the army, those force fields were beautiful. And just like that, this, you know, this game, I, I like to mention it a lot because it's a fun, fantastical animal. But if you've ever seen the old Dr. Doolittle, this game is a push me pull you. I move across the map, you move across the map. We both are trying to go back and forth and it's just all over the place. And now Nina's got her fifth base on the way, maybe able to, eh, I don't think she can put a ton of pressure on specials fourth. But yeah, I mean, look, this is classic NA Starcraft at its best. I have no, like, this game's pretty even now, <laughs> all things considered. Yeah, I mean, I think actually after that last set of trades, just because Nina has 
had such a stellar economy, I do actually like Nina's position a bit more. I I think that she managed to reset the Colossus count, or sorry, the Viking count while keeping her Colossus alive. I think even has still having a few storms available. She has 3-3 three, three on the way, whereas special still just on plus one armor. I'm actually, I'm liking a lot of things a lot more right now for Nina. I'm a little worried about this this double drop. That's what one special yeah. game number two is going to get deny this for the fifth base. And again, as we talk about this composition that Nina's going for, just in general with the Protoss late game, you want to be ahead economically. I mean, obviously in a game of StarCraft, you want to be ahead economically. He blinks forward, gets a couple of medivacs here, tries to chase around, but corners are absolutely the Terran player's best friend. So Nina has to be kind of careful, but even still, these ghosts are going to go down by far the most important units in this army. Medivacs die as well. And even though Nina loses her fifth base, I think I, I really do like more expanding mm -hmm. bottom right side. It's so far away from where the Terran wants to be. So he wins a fight, loses a base, gets, oh, he's not going to quite get that medevac. If the game goes on, this game is wild. Fear. I, this is serious. What am I, who am I saying? This game is wild. This series has been wild in the best way possible. Now Nina's active on the map. A single drop wants to go into the main base. Nina's got like five supply to warp with to counter warp in. So stalkers are going to have supply to run over. For that five supply. <laughs> oh, true. She's supply block too. <laughs> is going to have to recall some units. Does manage to find the medevac though. And is going to be able to take care of things. Recall going to be on cooldown. It just may not end up coming to effect, but we'll uh. see as Nina might be catching the army in the middle of the map in a massive limbo line. This is potentially an ideal fight here for Nina. as She is going to be able to use these destructors at a very awkward angle. The Colossus can also get some very very nice juicy connections off on these marines but nina's still on the retreat doesn't have the supporting zealots to actually really make the most of it and that means that the colossus are starting to get picked off finally the zealots are here to help reinforce but uh nina wow almost able to take a really really good set of trades there but just not having that frontline buffer she needed for it I was looking at him like, oh yeah I, I, this looks like it could be good for both sides nina comes down oh that's a good oh. storm oh that's a good storm but, you know, it's like Nina's coming down the ramp. Special's got a concave ready set up here. And the fact that he decides to re-engage as low as he is is wild. But he knows where the rest of the army is. So I guess that's going to be fine. And now Nina taking the bottom right side base, taking the left side base. Both of them are done, by the way. So now she's up technically two bases for the time being over the Terran. Special running over so soon. Just going to be one. And do you want to... So Nina won game one on this composition. Blink Stalker, Storm, Disruptor, Heavy Upgrades. Colossus as well. You want to see me in a transition can you transition on this map is it too spread out to move into kind of a sky toss idea uh, i mean i don't hate the idea of like a transition in a general vacuum i just i feel like alina is not the player that i think of is doing it robotics by getting target fired down is a very nice pick off there for special i think that these medevacs yeah are they are going to get focus fired down in exchange Special was trading out for some of the stalkers, but now also finds this left-hand side base that Nina established. No workers are being transferred over there or anything, so no other loss is going to be taken, but Nina is going to try and follow up with the pressure over here. There's only a couple of medevacs, so it's going to be hard to just, like, escape on out. Vikings going after the Colossus, but they are diving in right underneath the stalkers. That means that only one of the Colossus gets picked off, and two of the Colossus survive. Most of the Vikings end up dying. A special over... I well. He lost a lot of Vikings, so that's fine. But it felt like Special almost overbuilt Vikings for that fight. A lot of that, it was like 14 Vikings or something. It was a significant amount. And this army is, quite frankly, it's 3-3. It's better. It's 3-1 for Special. He just totally neglected his armor upgrades. So the Gateway army by itself was strong enough. The Gateway, Archon, Disruptor, whatever it is, the non-Robo units were strong enough by themselves to go in and take that fight. And then we saw that happen. So Nina, she's going to kill a Planetary. And that base is far more impactful than Nina... Losing the base, he hadn't even saturated this drop in the main base. Isn't going to get a lot done. I'm still, or excuse me, cannons as well. Knocking down some of the medevacs. Special is a four base Terran. His main base is totally mined out. Natural, pretty much the same way. And special trying to get too aggressive here with these drops. It was a very expensive 30 seconds. And all of a sudden, special's down 40 army supply. That shot is going to make it even more. And wait a minute here. Storms are going to go down. STVs have to get pulled. This is a disastrous 30 seconds for special, but at least the Vikings should knock the Colossus down. Maybe that's going to be enough. There are no Zealots here as well. Nina needs a little bit more to make this happen. She's breaking herself against the rocks of the Colossus, but at the end of the day, Ravi, even if that's happening, it doesn't matter. She's killed everything else. Yeah. Destructor fires a shot to hop into nothing as there's a single Marauder there. Even a special clean this up. Nina has just done simply way 
too much damage. She has way too good of an economy. And she has now nearly doubled the supply of special. Special's gonna stick in it for a little bit longer. But I think once some reinforcements arrive here for Nina, Special's gonna have to come to terms with the fact that he simply just does not have the tools available to try and mount some kind of miraculous comeback right now. It is going to be so unbelievably difficult. Yeah, I mean, 35 army supply. I don't even know if Special could deal with, for example, like if he tried to do an attack at the bottom right, I don't even think he could deal with the four cannons and a shield battery there right now with his army. Like, it's so, so unbelievably difficult. Storm, not gonna happen. Oh, that, that, that's a grim thought though. Oh, there's another storm on the backside. Planetary's dead as well. Special is dead. And for the first time in a long time, Special's not gonna be in the playoffs of the Americas region. And Nina looking a lot better than we've seen in quite a while. Clutches it out three games in a row. Some of the most entertaining StarCraft <laughs> that we've seen in, well, I'll tell you all day, that's for Dagon sure. What a, what a series. A really, really fun series. And truly, I think just uh, the style of StarCraft that Nina oftentimes plays, which mm -hmm. is...